that are joining online. Hmm? Oh. Who are sharing the screen? There you go. I, I don't think it was recorded. Oh. Even this one is not recorded. Because some of the speakers uh, said that would prefer not to be recorded. So we recorded some, but not all. OK. So um, the next uh, talk is by Jing Wang Ding from uh, University of Trento. And uh, effective prime factorization via quantum annealing by modular locally structured embedding. Introduction. Uh, this work is in collaboration with Giuseppe Spalita. Uh, this this work is in collaboration with Giuseppe Spalita, Marco Roveri, Roberto Sebastiani from University of Toronto, and Katie Buspai from D Wave System Inc. If you have to keep the mask, you have to shout. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, because this work, the microphones are not recording. Okay. <laughs> this work is supported by QATN. So uh, what's the prime factorization? It's a problem of decomposing a composite number into a product of prime factors. It is computationally hard and uh, often used in cryptography to design algorithms. So far, no polynomial time classic algorithm is known yet. Solving this problem via quantum annealing was first proposed by Rolf et al. in 2017. They proposed a method for encoding the prime factorization problem into Kubo and demonstrated that integers up to just 200,000 can be solved by D-Wave 2x processors. And then in 2018, John et al. proposed another encoding approach and they claimed large number up to about 250,000 can be embedded to D-Wave 2 thousand Q processors. Both state-of-the-art use the global embedding, which is encoding the given problem first into the Kubo without considering the hardware architecture, and then embed the Kubo to the architecture with generic uh, embedding algorithms. Instead, we propose a novel approach for prime factorization via quantum annealing based on locally structured embedding, which we proposed for solving set problems via uh, quantum annealing. Uh, we produce easy models that are directly compatible with Paxos, and we solve them via D-Wave Advantage processors. In this talk, we will pro present modular encoding of bitwise multiplier into Paxos, which uh, is synthesized offline via optimization modular series. We will show that this in, uh, modular encoding can be used in combination with qubit sharing to encode up to 21-bit times 12-bit multipliers on Pegasus topology, uh, ideally enabling uh, advantage system to factor 33-bit numbers, and most uh, this large number, 8 billion. However, in uh, rare architecture exists 40 qubits and couplings. In our experiments, we tested the multiplier encoding of uh, up to 17-bit uh, times 8-bit for D-Wave Advantage 4.1 to do prime factorization. Uh, we, we will demonstrate that the pulse annealing and the reverse annealing to performance enhancement techniques of quantum annealing can be find uh, solutions of the prime factorization. These two integers are the two examples factorized with non-zero energy and with zero en energy respectively. Here is our encoding approach. First, we represent uh, the multiplication as a conjunction of small Boolean functions. This is implemented um, by representing the bitwise multi multiplication with this control further and uh, representing the connection uh, between control for others with equivalence constraints. For example, C out of the, of the current control for other equal to the car uh, carry out equal to the carrying of the next uh, control for other. You can consider this conjunction as the 
uh, and and function of all components show on the left graph. Uh, the next step is to uh, transform this conjunction into the sum of uh, Kubo's or easy models of the corresponding small Boolean functions. For uh, control further function, we compute a easy model penalty function that is compatible with Pegasus via optimization module series offline. In this definition, notice that the graph VE represents the subgraph of the Pegasus topology, and A represents the ancillaries we introduced to find a valid penalty function. That is, uh, existing a pos positive gap such that for all x, the, the minimum of the penalty function equal to zero if x satisfies f, otherwise greater than or equal to the minimum gap. The OMT problem here is to maximize the minimum gap such that subject to the range constraints of bias and couplings. The variable equivalence constraints is encoded in the same way. The penalty function equal to zero if the variables are equivalent, otherwise equal to the maximum uh, minimum gap uh, here for uh, alternative to chain where the control parameters mapped to the disjoint subgraphs of the Pegasus, uh, the uh, equivalent variables here carry out of the, this control parameter and carrying of the next control parameter are forced to be equivalent with this strong coupling. We map them to the same qubit, making this uh, blue qubit uh, encoding, uh, encoding two variables simultaneously. Through this qubit, in, uh, oh, to prevent the bias of this shared qubit exceeding out of the range, we add extra constraints to the OMT. Uh, through this qubit sharing, we gain two more uh, qubits in gray uh, for the use of uh, ancillary variables and more couplings, which is expected to get a larger minimum gap. Uh, these qubit sharing techniques can be also extended to compensate the lack of uh, continuous chain in a 30 degree or 60 degree direction of the paxis. For example, if we want to propagate uh, input A in red node here, in 60 degree there is no continuous chain in this, in this paxis topology, but we can introduce a, a fresh var variable uh, C in out here and uh, append this uh, variable constraint to the control parameter, uh, just the same as the carry out into the carry in. Alternatively, this encoding can be used to uh, encoding up to 21 bit times 12 bit multiplier, uh, which has minimum gap for over three. The other multiplier encoding with larger minimum gap is two. Uh, the size is 22 bit times eight bit. Uh, in our experiments, we targeted at D-Wave Advantage 4.1, as, as shown in orange. There are some 40 qubits and couplings. Uh, so we in, uh, encode up to 70 bit times 8 bit using a unified uh, penalty function of control parameter with exact gap. This exact gap is guaranteed by fixing the position of the enable variable by qubit sharing and imposing co uh, strict constraints on, on the shared qubit and the cost overlap to coupling. Here's some preliminary results that encode the correct uh, factors uh, of the uh, input integers. Uh, we use the two initial, initialization methods to fit inputs to the Annealer. One is to substitute the inputs directly to the penalty function. The other is to first to sub substitute the inputs into the corresponding control further and re-encoding the control further. Uh, in order to factor in large numbers, we use the pulse annealing and reverse annealing. We set the pulse annealing time to 800 microseconds and total annealing time to uh, 40 microseconds and two different time interval 
intervals for forward and reverse annealing to find the optimal starting point of the pulse. For each uh, problem instance, we read uh, 1,000 times. As you can see, after the first after the forward annealing, we can get a very few samples that encode the solution, and no zero energy energy samples. But if uh, if we run reverse annealing from the local minima, uh, we get more solution samples and even zero uh, solution samples. Here we plot the energy distribution of the found solution samples in red and one lowest energy non-solution samples in blue. Uh, through reverse annealing, we, uh, we get lower energy, even zero, zero energy for bottom three cases. On the left, we plot the Hamming distance from the local minimum to a new uh, solution samples through reverse annealing and extract the exact uh, solution samples that all control for other functions correctly. Uh, as you can see, the Hamming distance is uh, less than 25. Uh, for the other initialization uh, approach, uh, we can ob obtain samples with energy less than gap only with the first, uh, uh, only with forward annealing. That is because re-encoding the control for either, uh, increase the minimal gap. Um, correspondingly, the Hamming distance is smaller than the previous. Uh, to conclude, we propose a novel approach for uh, solving prime factorization problems via quantum annealing based on locally structured embedding. Our approach ma maximizes the minimal gap of the local computation via uh, optimization series. And we can produce chains of almost the equivalent length or less chains, uh, which is uh, expected to bring better performance than global embedding. And we show the qubit sharing techniques can be used to encode up to 21 bit times 12 bit multipliers. And we demonstrate uh, the pulse annealing and the reverse annealing can be used to find the solutions of the prime factorization. Our future work goes into three directions, investigating how to make the most of uh, reverse annealing in combination of the forward annealing to reach zero energy, uh, try with less faulty annealers if possible, and extending our approach to the next uh, hardware architecture, Zephyr. Uh, lastly, I want to show you uh, the energy distribution of the samples obtained from quantum annealing on, uh, for a single control for uh, The red represents the solution samples and uh, the blue represents the non-solution samples. Among one, 100 samples, we can get uh, 90 samples that encode the solution and uh, one uh, encodes the solution but with large and uh, large energy. Uh, for the uh, control further of the 21 bit times 12 bit, we can get uh, uh, 84 and uh, 78 samples that encode the solution. I want to leave uh, this to you to imagine the performance of the uh, 43. Adventure system to factor 33 bit numbers. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your attention. Thank you. One of your collaborators wants to see which one of the participants. Alberto Sebastiani, yeah. No, no, I just, uh, I don't want to speak, I'm just. Ah, okay, good, I thought you wanted to speak. Okay. Is there any question? Um, 
So it seems like the embedding for Pegasus is a lot better than the embedding for the 2000Q. But one thing that I remember from some detailed studies of 2000Q was that uh, as you anneal the, uh, the multiplication circuit, you have qubits whose dynamics freeze at very different times based on their role in the circuit. And so I'm wondering if you've looked at uh, anneal offsets as a parameter for homogenizing the passage through the quantum phase transition. Uh, uh, yes, I uh, tried to uh, offset the annealing time. Mm. Uh, since we, uh, since our in in our encoding, we have um, almost uh, have no chain problem. We don't need to offset the offset the uh, annealing time for chain. And but I try to anneal annealing time of the uh, ancillary bits and the variables of control parameters, it seems like uh, if we do that way, we broke, broke the structure of the control parameter. Oh, okay. And we also tried to uh, uh, offset annealing time of border uh, control parameters and the inner, but we, uh, we haven't got a better solution, so maybe we, we will investigate uh, more detail in the future. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Yeah. If not, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.